Good morning, it's James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. I'm deeply grateful to have the honor and the blessing of laying eyes on you today. And uh, we're going to dive in deep into faith today. And maybe not in a way that you're expecting when you hear that word, because I think oftentimes we hear faith and it feels very esoteric. It feels very spiritual. And sometimes it feels like something that's kind of we have to work towards or build inside of ourselves and done in very spiritual practice. And I remember the first time that I was kind of uh, thinking about faith from a more Eastern perspective. It was nearly 40 years ago when I was in Nepal and I was doing something called a Datun, which is um, a lengthy spiritual time of silence, meditation, where for days on end you don't speak, but you really work on spiritual practices. And our meditation teacher said something to this group, and uh, I remember being fully taken by it because, listen, I was a kid who grew up in Vermont. I had never been in this part of the world. I, <laughs> I was just wide open. I was also very much um, looking for very wild, open, like esoteric spiritual practices. So I'm like, oh gosh, yeah, bring in the more esoteric, the more far out, the better. That's what I'm here for. And our spiritual teacher said, I want to talk about faith in a way that many of you may not be prepared for. I'm like, oh, here it comes. And he said, we're going to practice the fundamentals of faith under the influence of something called vivas, which is V-I-S-V-A-S, which is a Sanskrit word for faith. And it actually means, this is beautiful, it actually means breathing life into our life through the practice of faith. Breathing life into our life. And they went on to share something I wasn't ready for. He said that faith is often looked at as this very esoteric, lofty ideal that we can do through esoteric practice that seemed to be very deeply spiritual. He said, I don't want you all to forget the power of the fundamentals of faith. He said, there are five things that we need to practice every single day that will help us to breathe life, breathe life into our life. Number one, he said, it's about presence. Now, we know more and more that there's a lot of science that says being present is literally heroic these days. There's the law of distraction is, is everywhere. And the more that we can be here now and be fully present with ourselves, with people, with what's going on in the world, through the eyes of faith, we find ourselves fully connected to being in this space of grace. He used to say that presence is the wonderful thing that gives you the opportunity to witness how good you are at the same time, get a chance to witness where your greatest practices still have work to do. I love that. Number two, movement is a fundamental. He said, when you give yourself permission to move your body each and every day, you will have the elixir of faith at a neurochemical, spiritual, and physiological level. The union of those three places, and now we know through science, that when we move our body, all motion creates positive emotion, but we also find our faith in ourselves our ability to feel good about what it is that we want to be showing up for each and every day is augmented through movement. Number three, the fundamental of nutrition. He spoke deeply about the fact that when we give ourselves good food, food that nourishes our prana first, nourishes the, the spark of life. He said the more that you have live food in your body, food that is not refined, food that is not processed, the more that you can have yourself a fundamental faith of knowing that your mind, your body, and your spirit has everything it needs to nourish the idea of faith. And I just want to re kind of repeat this again because viva means breathing life into our life. And when we think about how food is used these days, more of a dietary thing as opposed to a spiritual thing, I love the idea of seeing food as an opportunity to nourish our life, breathing more life into itself. Powerful. Number four, sleeping. We talked a lot about the power of getting good night's rest. We know that science tells us the number one power of self-care and the practice it gives us to this is sleeping. And zest is the number one way in which we give ourselves this experience of coming most alive. Zest is made possible through a good night's rest. That's a fundamental. And the fifth thing, breathing. Giving yourself permission to breathe life into yourself engaging your diaphragm, taking a deep breath in, giving yourself permission to hold strong to your faith, breathing life into your life through the power of the life breath, prana, giving it yourself the opportunity to connect each and every moment with the idea of presence, with the idea of hope, with the idea of faith being demonstrated in you and as you. Vivas, faith, breathing life into life, 
through the fundamentals of presence, movement, food, sleeping, and yes, the breathing of fire into the way that we get a chance to show up each and every day and be a demonstration of love, of hope, and being the change we wish to see and need to see in the world right now. Let us be faith-filled and let us practice the fundamentals of loving self-care and know that they are the foundation for our self-love being made manifest into social, social activism. Much love, every blessing. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.